Hi there, I'm Lloyd. And I'm John, and we're from Pina Comics. As we dive into your favorite pop culture topics, we may just... Occasionally... Use language that could be considered... Globaloney? What? No, I mean... Oh, foul? Exactly. Offensive? No doubt. Uh, crass? You bet your ass! Sophisticated? What? No, no! Uh, anyways, you get it by now. It's mostly just... Gutter talk! And one more thing. Watch out for spoilers. Sometimes we drop them like trousers. You've been warned. Listen in. Some films are destined to be known as pure trash, whether through bad critical reviews, poor audience scores, or even troubled productions, these films live with the brand of being terrible. We here at The Pint know that all of these films cannot be as bad as reputed. Some are actually just so-so, while others are actually pretty good. Our mission? Watch these films and determine if they deserve their legacy of awfulness and report our findings back to you. This is Trash, Tolerable, or Treasure. You know she's saying you must do again. What? Straight again. Label out. Label out. Well, you heard Andrew Morgan say it. it's a Triple T episode, Trash, Tolerable, or Treasure. I'm John. I'm Lloyd. We are here, Pine and Comics, back at it again. Road to 200, uh, first week of August. Two interesting things happened in the first week of August of 2021, Lloyd, as long as everything goes to plan. Okay. Our other podcast that you should all be listening to, by the way, on the QT over at Forgotten Entertainment, will be ending. That's in the first week of August. The Is once, that when it's all over? The all Once right. Upon a Time in Hollywood episode comes out. And I think the same week is the week we hit 200 episodes on Pine and Comics. That's amazing. And if you were to ask me right now, what do you plan for your 200th episode? I have no so far plan. nothing, nothing, no changes. It might just be a regular episode, yeah. but hey, 200. That's pretty impressive. We're for, not going to uh, do what we did for 100, which was take audience questions and, no, and answer them. No, that was not even good. I didn't like that episode. <laughs> I truly did not like that episode at all. Um, well, you didn't do a whole season of uh, audience choice. No, we don't have seasons here. No, I, I, right, I, you have seasons, Mister Mike. Mike, we do. Mike from. Uh, from Forgotten Entertainment, Forgotten Cinema. Yep. Uh, he is our boss over on uh, on, on the QT. <laughs> yeah. But but we feel a little bit less he, pressure. He loves here. being called boss. I don't, do, don't actually. Let him I'm okay with that. I'm A little bit that. less pressure yeah. over here when he's on Pine and Comics. Uh, he's guested many times on the show, uh, Pint Movie Invitationals. You might remember American Graffiti. Mm -hmm. uh, he did one of our very first Triple T episodes when we talked about. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Yes. Now, before we get into... Treasure. The, before we get into... <laughs> That's it, right. no, you did give it treasure. Before we jump into tonight's movie, if you can call it a movie. <laughs> oh, um, I guess we know your rating. We, <laughs> what are you talking about? We I don't are what you guys are saying. at the point in time where you know a new Indiana Jones movie is being filmed. Yes. Because Harrison Ford has been hurt and is out of commission <laughs> for like six weeks. No, yeah, yeah. In all seriousness, uh, being an indie mega fan. Yeah. You have a dog named Indiana. I do. All right. Uh... You, you said Raiders of the Lost Ark is your favorite movie of all time. Yes. You gave a much maligned movie a treasure status. Wrongly maligned. Wrongly, <laughs> wrongly maligned, but you gave it a treasure status. I did. How do you... And we talked about this a little bit, I think, on that episode, even though it was a year before. That was like a year ago. Yeah. But now that it's happening, yeah. are you getting excited? Have you seen some, some stills online? Are you feeling it? No. Not at all. It's no Spielberg. No Spielberg. Yeah, that but that really bothers me. I mean, I'm gonna watch it, and I'll probably I'll see the trailer. And I'll be like, oh, you know, I'm gonna be interested. But like, I was really excited for Kingdom Skull, uh, cat, whatever, cat, whatever it's called again. Uh, Crystal Skull. <laughs> that great movie. I I'm, can't remember I'm, I'm, I'm so old. Um, but I just no Spielberg, and I'm just like, it just doesn't feel. Who's directing it? James Mangold. Yeah. Oh. And I mean, I'm not, no, I'm not, you know, I like his movies. I wasn't a huge Logan guy. I know everyone is, but that's fine. But um, I just, I can't, it's not Spielberg. So it's like, it's, I can't get excited. I, Maybe I we can get Toby Hooper. Butler's mad at me. Uh, my Forgotten Cinema partner's mad at me because he's he keeps texting me stuff about it. Like, you know, Mads Mikkelsen's in it, which we both love and yeah. I love him. Uh, but like, he's like, get excited. I'm like, I, I can't. And like, and, and like, 
I, I saw the comment where it's like Mickelson's in it and Mangles are like, do whatever you want, man. It's your car- I want you to create a character. It's like, what? No, 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 no. You're you're directing it. And it's just, it's a, I can go down the tangent. Is, is George Lucas involved in this one in terms of writing or anything? I don't think so because he sold all all those rights to Disney. Like so, he is not he's not involved in any of that. All right. So I just can't I don't, I can't get excited because Spielberg. I mean, because I'll watch it like I said, but no Spielberg, no me. All right. Well, here, look, let's do this. Over on Forgotten Cinema, you guys just do movies that are forgotten, basically. Yeah. Right? And over here, we don't do new movies either. <laughs> but let's, let's, when that movie comes out, let's review it on this show. Okay. All yeah, right? absolutely. So a year we from can now, do that. whatever, let's do a special. Uh, and I could love it. We'll, yeah. we'll do a special episode just to see what you felt about John, it. John, are you, are you totally excited for Not it? Not at all. Not at Not all. Not at all. Not for the same reasons. I just, I. He's, he's 78 years he's old. He's 78. He, I, yeah. And I saw one, I saw some of the pictures. But where he looks like 70. Oh, no. He's a young 78. Yeah, <laughs> he's a young 78, but still 78. Yeah. And I, I recently saw some of the pictures where they've got the black dots on his face, Yeah, which means that they're going to de-age him. And I'm sorry. I know people love this stuff, but that de-aging technology yeah. does not totally work are they, for me. Are they de-aging him like because there's like flashbacks? I believe so. See, you can't de-age walking. Like, he's going to walk like an older man. Right. Like, uh, you know what? Why don't we go to old school Hollywood? And just hire another yeah, actor to I play know. him at a different I, point. I don't know. You know, I, 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 don't. I rewatched Rogue One mm-hmm. uh, a few weeks ago, which is still a stand-up, fantastic Star Wars sure. movie. But I still get taken out when Tarkin, yeah, Tar- and Tarkin looks better than Leia. Leia to me, yeah, he looked better dead. <laughs> Leia to me just looks <laughs> like uh, you know Peter. Ma- uh, what was that? Peter uh, Cushing. Peter Cushing was. Pretty ghastly, like you know. He, <laughs> he he was, if you were to say yeah, like, draw, to if that. you were to say, get me a picture of a British dude, you know what I mean, like with the sunken in chink bo- yeah. cheekbones and everything. Yeah. He's um, the go-to guy. He, he is the go-to guy. But but in all seriousness, that de aging technique, and I've never seen the Irishman, but I've seen some of the scenes. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough, it, but it's a good it's a good movie. But it is there's scenes where you're just like oh, he's you're taking old. me out you're yeah t- you've taken yeah. me out of it it's like ian malcolm and uh, jurassic park you never you know you never stopped th- whether you should you should do it you know you know you could do it <laughs> it works like, really well for tony stark but he's a young man anyway oh uh, we told my in uh, robert downey jr in the last avengers yeah when they did that yeah, yeah they did the de-aging well i think i think you're actually fantastic thinking, are you think you're thinking of civil war Yes, at the beginning when he when he it, re- reveals his no with his father yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Civil Is that War. Civil War? Yeah. I'm confusing it with Spider-Man because the the bad guy in Spider-Man Homecoming, right? Is it Homecoming? Or no, Far From Home. Far From Home. Created that technology Correct. or something like that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I'm talking about, yeah, the one John said. Yeah. And and, and in uh, Guardians 2, when Kurt Russell, Kurt Russell plays yeah, himself that was, as a younger yeah, man. Really may, well done. You know, I'm assuming that the Disney family have the same technology, but it seems like in the Marvel movies it's worked better. But I don't know. It's I'm, like a I'm new toy. Nervous. It's like yeah. a new toy they have, and they're just going to use it now. I and then I, to, I hear you. I don't want them to rely like, on. Why that. can't you use younger actors? Just use a different actor. Uh, we can go down a whole. We can talk about Hollywood and what's going on and where they're going and just what they're churning out. But you know, I'm always an indie film guy, yeah. so I love independent cinema, and I love when smaller productions come out and or like when stories come out like you wouldn't like they're not like IP builders or world builders or mm. franchise. You know, re, you know, redoing stuff for franchise when when there's just a standalone film i'm always probably going to champion that but it's just it's it's maybe because i'm getting older we're getting old it's just not exciting like yeah. some of the stuff like i it's cool that batman's coming out or the batman i get it it's i'll watch it but like how many more do we need right i mean no i get it i agree you know i mean does it does it i know you're you're more comic guys than i am does oh, it no, get too much i'm for totally you? burnt out on comic yeah movies, I, so. I'm, a, I'm a comic guy but i'm not like ex- I'm I could at, probably the go the rest right of my life without watching a comic movie. Yeah. I'm at the yeah. point right now. I, I do enjoy the comic movies, but like, I don't get excited about a lot of movies anymore. It has to be like there are movies I look forward to, mm-hmm. but like, there's not a lot. Like, this is the summer, right? Right now, we're going in the summer season, mm-hmm. and we've got like a new Ghostbusters coming out. I don't really care. Yeah, agreed. You know, yeah. I'm just at that point in my life. You know what movie I really look forward to seeing because I wanted to see it last year? Candyman. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I totally Pardon forgot me. about that. I really enjoyed Candyman. And I think this take looks really interesting, but that's that's the opposite of a, of a superhero movie. This is a you know a, yeah, a, yeah. A, a kind of a reboot remake of an older uh, horror movie. Yeah, I don't I don't get the same as I used to. I hear you. No, I I hear you. It's it's tough. Pardon me while I belch completely into the microphone <laughs> from my beer. Um, so let's talk about what we're here to talk about today. Do we Trash, have to? Right? Yeah. <laughs> we, haven't even, we haven't even mentioned it yet. Trash, <laughs> tolerable or treasure? Uh, if you've never heard heard these episodes, we uh, we take a movie that's. Uh, Got a reputation for being uh, not so good. 
we divisive. Talk, we talk about the reasons that it might have been uh, given this uh, this mark, this scarlet letter. <laughs> we talk about a couple things we like about it, things we don't like about it, and then at the end, we each individually give it the the triple T rating, which right. one we felt it, uh, it falls in. And we're talking about the 2002 remake of the 1975 Rollerball. Oof. Now, first things first, I picked this one. Part of the reason I picked this one is because I remember seeing this circa 2002 on video and absolutely fucking hating it <laughs> and thinking that this is total trash. Mm-hmm. Somehow or another, it came into my wheelhouse again, and I have like a list of triple T movies I want to do. And I thought, this is an interesting one because this one can almost qualify for Field's show, Forgotten Cinema. Oh, God, no. Well, because it, it kind of is forgotten as well. Oh, yeah. but It yeah. straddles the line of whether it's forgotten or trash. Yeah. But well, once you start reading the history of this movie and kind of remembering when it came out, this thing certainly earned the trash moniker in terms of like, you know, it's then. not just forgotten. Back right, right, then, right, this right, thing right, was a right. big bomb. Yeah. Big bomb. Manster, are you fr- were you familiar with this as a, like, as a product at all? When you told me we were doing Rollerball... I was confused. I'm like, why are we, what are you talking about? I was not even aware of the movie. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I probably don't even remember that it came out in 2002. Uh, I was completely surprised. And I'm like, why is this even on our list? So <laughs> no, no, not aware of the product. But you saw all. the original, right? Yeah, the yeah. original I liked. And I definitely want to go back and watch it. I did I, not honestly, have time before this, but. I haven't seen the original in many years. It, it was a favorite of my father's. I yeah, it was a favorite of mine. Back really in the day. enjoying it, mm-hmm. and obviously, it, it it was not considered trash. Let's make that clear. No, the no. first one was not not considered trash. So we're going to go over a little bit of the uh, of the film itself. Then we'll have some. I have some questions, and we'll talk about the production and kind of what what threw this in there. Because one of the things we talked about ever since the first episode of this with Waterworld with Andrew was production problems, oh. and this one is rife with that stuff. Right. So, uh, Rollerball came out on February eighth, two thousand two. It was filmed July 24th through November of 2000. There's a red flag right off the bat (laughs) that it was filmed two years before it came out. Filmed uh, all around St. Paul, Minnesota, San Francisco, and up in Quebec and Alberta, Canada. Uh, Standing in for, I don't know, fucking Kazakhstan Kazakhstan, or something. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, that's not given a name, right? It's it's not even Kazakhstan. It's some other weird thing. When you watch this movie and you realize all the strife that was involved in the making... I think you realize that at some point it probably had a, a the country had a name, mm-hmm. and then they just said, "Fuck it, don't worry about it." There's <laughs> no. so many things seem to have changed. It is Kazakhstan. I'm wrong. Is, is, is it, it Kazakhstan? It, is it, is it Kazakhstan? It's Kazakhstan. It's Kazakhstan. Okay, Kazakhstan. Yeah, interesting. This was directed by John McTiernan. Okay, interesting fact. Go over to Forgotten Cinema uh, right now because this episode's coming out very soon. And a couple weeks ago, they did one of their new mini episodes about John McTiernan. Right. John McTiernan is the director of Predator. He directed Die Hard 1 and 3 with a vengeance. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hunt for Red October. Yep. So this guy has got a pretty so good... So obviously good credentials. This is going to be a great movie. Very good credentials. You know, <laughs> There's a couple of things in there that aren't great. Medicine Man, that wasn't great. Mm. There's a couple of things in there. You don't like Medicine Man? No, it was garbage. It's I didn't right. like that It was one. the ants. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a fan <laughs> of that one. Uh, written by... Okay, so here's, here's where we get all the different uh, writing stuff. William Harrison wrote the original short story called Rollerball Murder. He also wrote the screenplay for the 1975 film. Uh, Larry Ferguson is one of the um, screenwriters. Uh, he wrote Beverly Hills Cop 2, yep. Alien 3. I love Alien 3. People hate that movie. I love Alien 3. Uh, and Highlander, right? You cannot not like Highlander. Hunt for Red October. Yeah. Oh, he's you... in Hunt for Red October, which I discovered when we are doing Chief oh, yeah. of the Boat. Yeah, he's the one. He's like, Chief Firearm. Oh, okay. He's the one that comes up with the yeah. firearm. Yeah. Yeah, I read that I was myself. like, oh my God, that's him. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and John Pogue is the other writer. Uh, look for a future Forgotten Cinema episode about uh, U.S. Marshals, which yes. he wrote. Uh, and Ghost Ship. Ghost Ship yeah, has Ghost one Ship. memorable moment. It's that cable in the beginning. You ever see Ghost Ship? It's a garbage movie, but there's a scene in the beginning <laughs> where a, uh, a cable... A, you ever see it? No. Oh, this, this cable on the deck of the ship gets snapped, and all these people are on a cruise ship, and they're dancing, and it cuts all of them Oh, I have oh, seen that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like that Hero of the Vengeance. That happens in the first four minutes, and then there's like 90 minutes of more shit. 
He also wrote the skulls. That's a New Haven based, right? That's right. He wrote the skulls and like the skulls two and three. Mm. He kept going back. He kept going back. Got to get that paycheck. Uh, This film was uh, so it was filmed in 2000, released in 2002. It was set in the in the far future of 2005. Yes. (laughs) Which I don't think they ever say in the movie, but but in the screenplay apparently Uh, 2005. When I was doing this, I said to somebody, "I'm like, oh, I'm watching Rollerball. I think it was like 2009, 2011. I look at 2002. Oh my gosh, is that old? Yeah, Yeah, almost 20 years old. Yeah." All right, I'm going to start with Field on this question. Sometimes movies get the trash uh, moniker because they're an adaptation of something. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, like, what are some of the reasons? How do you feel generally about remakes as a whole? Uh, I think when you remake a good movie, uh, I I feel both ways. When you remake a good movie, it's like, why? Like, I'd rather you remake a movie that didn't get it right so that you can make it better. But I will say, like, for for example, like West Side Story that's coming out that Spielberg did. Yeah. I get the fact that you're not you're remaking it for a whole new generation. You're not gonna you know some people may not if you're staying with the story. This is not a bad example in terms of rollerball, but like West Side Story, <clears throat> like kids, my kids are not gonna go back and watch the fifties, fifty seven yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. not gonna go back yeah. and watch the fifties West Side Story unless their parents sit them down and say, "Hey, let's watch this." So updating stuff like that is. It's good because it, it kind of gets it back into the zeitgeist and gets it back into everyone can watch it and, and talk about it. And then you can go revisit the old one if you want to. But generally, remakes, I'd rather them do something that maybe just the original, if they're redoing it because they want to tell the story a little bit better or if they're revisiting characters. It, it's, it depends. It's Honestly, it depends on the story. Like if they're redoing, like you talk about Candyman before we did this. Right. Like, you know, like... I'd be okay with that because Candyman was so long ago and it's not like a retreat. You haven't seen like eight Candymans. There's only been three? Three. Three. Yeah. So, you know, it's and it was an it was a more interesting uh character in terms of Candyman himself. So I'm okay with that. But like, do I need another Freddy? I don't know. Like stuff like that. Like right. you know what I mean? Like Batman, like we talked about. You How know? about Evil Dead? Oh, I'll, I'll listen. They can, as long as Bruce Campbell's involved, yeah, I'm all right with that. But yeah, I know they're redoing one, but he's not in it, right? Yeah, it's, he's, he's, pro- producing he's producing it, it but yeah. not in it. Did, did you like, we we actually did the um, remake. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, I yeah. wasn't a big fan of it. I enjoyed no. it. It's, I want the camp. The camp is what I love. Mm-hmm. I love the gore, but the camp with the gore is what's the best thing about it. That's I what makes it work. I agree, yeah. but I think the camp is so contingent on Bruce Campbell. Oh, of course. Yeah. And when you don't have Bruce Campbell, yeah, he's absolutely. got a camp right in his name. Did you watch so. the Star <laughs> Show? Uh, Did you oh, ask for Ash, 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 Oh my god! Love it, right? Love it. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I wish it didn't end at three. Yeah, it ended yeah. perfectly. Yeah, Manster. We know that you hate sequels. You hate them. I'm not a sequel You're not guy. Not a sequel and guy. I'm not really a much of a reboot guy. That, okay, so I was going to ask you, where are you at with remakes? No, I mean nobody's going to remake right, like Psycho, right? I mean that's ridiculous. <laughs> you, know, shot you, don't, shot. you don't remake. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but he did that to do the other movie, right? That's why he did that shot for shot. He's like, "I'll do this remake, but you're gonna fund my other movie." Yeah, well, that's I mean, why he did that. Yeah, the, the, yeah. But still, did he have to do it at all? You did know? you read the? Uh, not to cut you off, but did you read that in the article, or whatever that recently that said like they approached Spielberg about rebooting Jaws? Yeah, and he was like, "No, just no, <laughs> just no." Thank God. Yeah, but once he passes, that's gonna happen. Ugh, I know. I don't like I, thinking about I, it. We're not here for that. <laughs> we're tying too. Z- Z- Zemeckis <laughs> and Steel- Spielberg are keeping. Back to the Future and Jaws. They should like lock them somewhere in conservatorship or something. Just a like lot. you can't use like, it. Yeah. You don't ever need to have those redone again. Yeah, please. Ever. How about uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind? No, that's, you can't do that. Can I, okay, I'll be honest. Uh, you can don't it like be, it? Can it I, be improved? No, no. I do like Close Encounters, but Close Encounters is not like, here's Jaws. Okay, audience who can't see me. My arm is <laughs> real high. Yeah. Here's Close Encounters. It's no, half it's as below. High. It's for sure. It, yeah. it's, it's considered a classic. It is a classic. It's well made. But it's never touched me. Like, uh, like non-popular opinion. E.T. came out when I was seven years old. It, I have no connection to that anymore. I could care less How, about When's E.T.? the last time you watched E.T.? Years. And I'll tell you partially why. When he's in that ravine all dried up, I cry like a motherfucker. That's why you can't watch it? That means that, that, means that movie's touching you. All right. All right. Yeah. In, a, in a good way. Um, <laughs> I will say with Close Encounters, it's, an, it's about aliens, but it's not about aliens. You know what I mean? It's oh, not it's family. It's, right. But if they redid it, they totally screw that. They up. would screw it up. Absolutely. Yeah. If they yeah. redid it, do you, now Spielberg has said uh, here on the, here on the Rollerball episode, <laughs> here Spielberg, on the podcast, Spielberg has said that uh, if he had done that after he had had kids, he would never let Roy get on that ship. I, I yeah. Probably. Do you think if they remade that today, they'd let him get on that fucking ship? Because that is hard to watch. It's a tough. No it's way. a tough choice. No way. He leaves his family. Now yeah. he leaves his family for 
maybe the most noble and important thing on earth. Right. But he still leaves his fucking Absolutely, family. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But see, I but see, I Spielberg does this thing where he always tries to go back and retcon stuff and revision and revise it. And it's like, no, leave it alone because that's you at that moment in time and that's your story. Right. You know, don't don't change it. But I hear you. I, by, yeah. by retconning, do you mean like where he said that Netflix and everything shouldn't get Oscars? And then he and signed him. He signed with him. Because yeah. <laughs> listen, they're gonna dump. They're gonna back up the truck of cash to you. Like they, they basically are saying, like, make your movie. We're not gonna tell you what to do. Yeah. Do whatever you want to do. Because they're smart. Yeah. You get someone yeah. like Spielberg under your wing. You have officially. <laughs> yeah. You know, Zack Snyder's one thing. You know. Yeah. You get Spielberg. That's a whole other yeah. thing. All right, Manster, uh, before we start talking a little bit about the production issues with this one, let's go over the cast. Let's talk about who's in this thing. Do we have to? Yeah. Do we have to? I'm just kidding. No, do we even want to bumper sticker this thing or no? Oh, yeah. Yeah, bumper sticker it. it. Do bumper sticker it. it. Let's hear oh, it. Jesus. Is that the bumper sticker? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, Jesus. NHL uh, prospect Jonathan Cross is recruited to play for the Zambel Horsemen of Kazakhstan for uh, the sport rollerball. The game's top promoter will stop at nothing to secure higher ratings. That's the story. He was that an is. NHL player. They they do say in the beginning that he was gonna try out. Yeah, that's why he didn't. And want then him. when they when they announce him during the rollerball game, that sports announcer, uh, he's like, "Oh, this was he got he had the Wayne Gretzky contract. He was a superstar." I'm like, that doesn't even match what you yeah, already well, said five minutes ago. Well, I guess when he gets handed the thing, he's like, "Okay, what is he now?" Because they keep reinventing him. Oh, okay, yeah, but yeah, so, but I'm not yeah, trying to make excuses. No, I get yeah, I get yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. It's stupid. This this movie, whether we think it's trash or not, at the end of this, no, this movie. You could just see the different fingers in the pie, the different, you know, reshoots. It's it's so clunkily kind of put together in terms of like story and all this stuff. So who who play, so who's the first actor in this thing? Uh, well, you've got a very anemic Keanu Reeves. Oh no no no! I'm sorry, that was Chris Klein. Originally was, offered to Keanu Reeves, who, who very who, smartly said no. Yes, very smartly, indeed. And he was not in like the like, well. Okay, The Matrix had just come out. But and that was a good part of his career. But like he he was still making movies like The Replacements and Hardball. He very well could have done this. He could have very smart move on his part not to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and very poor choice in in McTiernan and the casting department. Chris Klein at this point had done one thing. He was well known at this point for being in American Pie. I haven't seen American Pie in a long time. I can tell you one thing. He's actually charming in American Pie, right? He's kind of like the jock kid. Hey, man. Yeah, exactly. But, but hey. I mean, he's like the good-looking jock. He's not jock. the charismatic leading man. Right. He, he's 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 the good-looking jock who could sing, and you believe him in that role, but he's not the leading man. He is not strong. He's not strong. Yeah. No. That's putting it nicely. I did actually like him in that role, but he is not strong. No. He, in this movie, so in the past couple of years, we've had <laughs> movies with, what's his name? Taylor, uh, John Carter from Mars. Taylor Kitsch. Oh, yeah. Taylor yeah. Kitsch. There was a period where they were trying to make him yeah. uh, a leading man, Battleship John Carter, and it sh- just didn't work. And people kind of gave him shit, but he's not a terrible actor. No, he's not. He's no, good. No, he's good. He he's could good. carry it further than Chris Klein. Chris could. Klein is fucking bad. Yeah. yeah. Chris Klein is so bad in this movie that he's so bad that I can't believe at no point during all these production problems they didn't say, okay, we're 30% into shooting. We've got to change a lot of stuff. Fire Klein. Yeah. Get someone else in it's, here. It's almost like, are you? Uh, on substances or something wrong like yeah. is this this can't be how bad you are <laughs> like this can't be like it, it's yeah. it's easily for a major he, budgeted american movie one of the worst lead actor uh well turns I mean, i've ever seen well you we, you have yet to seen the street fighter one that he was in after this right oh, yeah no. yeah because no, no, no. oh you've not seen that no you want to see bad oh he gets worse oh yeah well, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't surprise me because he dropped off the face of the earth. Like for the most he's part. he's compared to Nick Cage, but like Nick Cage is in on it, right? You know what I mean? Like he knows what he's doing. No, who oh, compares they, him to Nick? Cage? They they compare him like his his style, like the way he's acting in like oh, Street Fighter. Like they're like they're okay. like, oh, it's like Nick Cage esque, but it's like no, Cage knows what he's doing. Like he's yeah. off the rails. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah but okay. it's right. but no, he's not. He is not. I am being nice when I say he is not strong no, at yeah, all. Yeah, you know, you're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. Absolutely right. Yeah, so Chris Klein, like you said, American Pie. He was in Election. Uh, Which is in, an awesome film. Yep. I love Election. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a long time, but yeah. it's a good movie. And I guess he was in The Flash, season five. Yeah. I, uh, I fell off of that show. So. Yeah, I read, I read, I, me, me too. I read, I read he played a villain in that. I'm like, yeah. holy shit, they're slumming. Yep. Uh, then you have Jean Reno as Alexei Petric, Petrovic. Yep. He's basically the promoter of this sport of rollerball. He's a scumbag. <laughs> 
He's he's uh he's mid <laughs> Petrovich. He's yeah. mid nineties to mid two thousands action movie bad guy. Yes. Except he has no <laughs> there's no real like other than greed. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't have an end game. He just wants he doesn't mm-hmm. want these guys to fly home. Nobody he, in this movie yeah. has yeah, any, there's there's not any, much thought going on. No, here. there's nothing. <laughs> uh but you'll you'll know him from the film Nikita, uh the professional or Leon the Professional. Uh, Godzilla, the 98 version, and the Da Vinci Code. Mission Impossible. A ton, ton of other things. Ronin. Yeah, Mission. Yep. Ronin's awesome. Then we have LL Cool J himself uh, going back to Cali. 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 Uh, <laughs> going back to Cali. As uh, Marcus Ridley, uh, another rollerballer. Basically, you know, the sidekick. I don't know what to do. Yeah. The guy who recruits uh, they're, they're Jonathan be- they're, Cross. They're best friends, although yeah. there's nothing that best proves friend. He that. shows up. Yeah. Like magically, he's been gone away, right? And he mm-hmm. shows up on some street, uh, picking picks up him up Chris after, Klein after he straight dead. up murders somebody. Oh, but he ridiculous. murdered that guy. Ridiculous. That guy's dead. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I love the fact that Klein, not to jump ahead, but I love the fact that he's like, "Yeah, I gotta leave the country." It's like, you know, the cops aren't gonna forget. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I'll, I'll go. I'll go oh, back when God. the cops have forgotten yeah, about me yeah. killing that guy in, the, yeah. in that in that illegal exactly. street. Like I don't know what what was that a street uh, luge? Street, street luge. Yeah. That was like the most two thousands oh. moment in the movie. This, yeah. this that whole, whole scene just made me angry. You know, like <laughs> what the fuck are you showing me? This entire movie, if it wasn't called Rollerball, could be called early two thousands mm-hmm. because yeah. the the whole soundtrack is fucking new metal. Yep. You know, it's like we've got corn and we've got fucking we you got know, Rob Zombie, you got Pod, Rob Zombie, yeah. Pod. Yeah. You know, it's like Pink shows up a little bit, like, even though she's not. She's like in the I'm going to admit right now, a lot of those songs used to be on my like, oh, no, uh, no, no, my no, yeah. running playlist when I had my nothing little wrong. Diamond but Rio do, you, do you know player. when it was on your running playlist in the early 2000s? <laughs> yeah, and, no, exactly. That's right. Twenty years ago. Yeah. On yeah. my Diamond Rio. There's like a music video with Pink, and they're like in the video. It's like a whole rollerball oh, music Christ. video, for, and like because she's in the background, and like you just see her face, and like a random Pink sighting, like she's just on the screen yeah. behind him. Yeah. yeah. Two years prior, LL Cool J was in in a great Deep Blue Sea action yes. fucking nineties movie, Deep Blue Sea, awesome. where where if you do remember his his hat is like a shark's fin. Absolutely, yeah. Right? Deepest bluest. Deepest bluest. I love that movie. Yep. You yeah. You know, and then and then you're like, oh man, he was so good in that. Shark ate my bird. <laughs> Shows up in this fucking thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Any given Sunday. That is the best, de- best death in it with Samuel Jackson. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw that in the theaters. I fucking uh, yeah, jumped. That was awesome. That, I that, fucking jumped. I don't know. I don't think I, I don't know if I brought it up on this podcast before, but like that death and then the executive decision death with Steven Seagal. Oh, like, oh, we get sucked through the end. I clapped in the theater at that point. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. yes. yes. We're not going to make it. You are. I was like, oh. <laughs> uh, then we have Rebecca Romaine Stamos at the time. At the time. Uh, as Aurora. Uh, I guess the Black Widow might have been her code name. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh you're attention. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was she, uh, <laughs> go ahead. I, I just have a Romaine Stamos. Was she one of the locals? I think she was a local. She was Kazakhstan. Yeah. She used her, her she Kazakhstan accent. accent. An accent yeah. And uh, yeah. One, one of my favorite bits about her is that she didn't want... Originally, this movie was going to be a hard R. Yeah, she oh, yeah. I would have rather seen that movie. She didn't want any nudity. They initially had... So they initially had a... a you know, there was a longer sex scene between yeah. her and Chris Klein. And she is topless. She's in it. topless. In yeah. the film, when she walks towards him topless, they put a shadow. A shadow, in, yeah. Which I thought was awkward when I watched it, and then I read that they put that in on purpose to get yep. it to a PG thirteen. Yeah. She's a fucking American supermodel. She has a minor scar that runs across her mouth. Yep. And they keep referring to it like she's a goddamn disfigured monster. <laughs> she asked for it. Like, yeah. yeah. She even says it at one point. When I think after they sleep together, he says something like, you know, um, you know, you're not nearly as ugly as you think you are. It's crazy. I'm like, have you ever talked to a woman before? <laughs> yeah. Like, first of all, uh, she's goddamn gorgeous. Yeah. And second of all, if you really Especially love her. Especially with the black hair. If you really love her, just say, you know what? You're beautiful. Don't yeah. worry about I that. I love I your stars. I don't think Klein can go there. He literally, no, 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 no. Whoever wrote this fucking thing literally wrote the line, you know, you're not nearly as bad as you think Somebody you are. wrote that. Yeah. Can you believe it? Somebody wrote that. Oh, my fucking Lord. <laughs> well, how about the outfit that she they put her in at, at, the end? at the end? I'm like, why? Yeah. Like, why was this? Why? Yeah. Very strange. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go one or two more. Yeah, there's not much. <laughs> yeah. There's plenty more, but I'm going to skip them. Naveen Andrews as Sanjay. Uh, Naveen Andrews from Lost. Uh, he played Saeed. A couple years before Lost, yeah. Yeah. Um, and and using his real uh, his real very like a feet British accent too. Yep. I, I don't know what he is in this movie. He's just underused like he's, assistant. He's the what assistant. What the fuck is he? Yeah. He's, what he's he the do? assistant who has no. You can't hear his lines. Yeah. yeah. He's the assistant who has no part of this movie until he becomes the bad guy at the end uh, for no reason. For no reason. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Uh, I'll skip down to Paul Heyman. He's the sports announcer. Yeah. I had to look this guy up. He looked familiar. He is a huge name in the ranks of uh, professional wrestling. I, I'm, I'm not sure a our buddy guy. know our buddy Lou uh, Skywalker knows exactly who this is. He's yeah. also extremely annoying. He yeah <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you. No, he he's sucks. gonna do it. Oh my he god, he's gonna I do hate it. Him. I, I, hate I got him. what they were doing. They were trying to have the Rush Limbaugh of Rollerball. Yeah. You know, like he's this like he's the Howard Stern of this uh, of the uh, announcers. Yeah. But like the whole first scene. The whole first rollerball scene where he's very hyperbolic and yeah. you know very loud. I just wanted him to shut the fuck up. Yeah. As the movie went along, his scenes and his, where his character starts to become more sympathetic and realizing that things are they toned him down. Right. But again, that seems like we're we, we're making three different movies here, and the first part might have been how he was in the first part, and then we went for reshoots. We said tone it down a little bit. Yeah. Nothing seems to fucking. It's so same. disjointed. This whole every aspect of this yeah, movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll just say a couple of cameo appearances. You said Pink, uh, the band Slipknot was that's in right. it, uh, and Shane McMahon. Oh, that's right. Another wrestling yeah. uh, name. All right, so some of the production stuff here. McTiernan gets the first script. The script was rewrit- rewritten multiple times. The original, no. the original Rollerball movie. <laughs> the original Rollerball movie is say. highly about, uh, there's social commentary and, all over. I, yeah. Right. <laughs> McTiernan gets the first script, and he tells them, Get rid of this social commentary right. shit. More rollerball. More rollerball. <laughs> Less good movie. And not more rollerball. We want more of the sports entertainmentness mm-hmm. of rollerball. I want this like to WWE. be like WWE. I want to focus on that. I don't want to focus on because when it comes down to it, there. Yes, you you get the fact that they're in this impoverished land, but it never focuses on that. The whole focus of this movie is that the main characters realize that they're playing a sport that is getting more and more dangerous for ratings, and they want to escape home. And the bad guys just don't want to let them escape home. Right. That's fucking it. That's it. That's they, it. They, they talk they, about, they like, want the ratings they talk about like, workers, unions, striking and stuff. But that's not... I feel like that was a part of the original script, and it leaked into it a little bit. Yeah. I, well, it's like the script... I can see why he made that decision, maybe because this the story of Rollerball, or, or in terms of social commentary, has already been, not since since 75, but since then, it's been done over and over right. again. So I get that, but it's like, it's almost like, oh, no, I don't I don't want to do that movie. It's like, well, then what movie are you doing then? Because right. it's not about the sport. Honestly, this isn't in America already? Come on. Like, it's some third world country that this yeah. is in. It's not anywhere else. Well, especially by saying it's in the future. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, so we're five, we're five years ahead of when it was filmed. And we're so civilized that we're not going to do this? Right. Exactly. Please. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Please. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, let's just get into this real quick. We, we talked about McTiernan for a minute. And I don't know. I haven't heard your episode yet. I don't know if you get into it or not. I know it's a short episode. McTiernan, the guy who made Predator, two diehards. He made Hunt for October. This is the movie he went to jail over. <laughs> I don't yeah, think right. I don't think we can not talk about that for a couple yeah. minutes. He hasn't done anything since that. He has since, done, since he's gone to jail. Right. Yeah. Now, Field, what exactly did he do? Oh man. So it's the Anthony Pelicanos case, and he hired him. He was so Pelicanos is like a private eye. And people were hiring him to spy on like executives and other just within Hollywood, like to get right. dirt to find out because and he was something was going on McTiernan and he hired him. And I think McTiernan basically became the one they could get to kind of make an example. And then that's why he's in jail because there were other people that were involved. It wasn't just him. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. but I mean, but the crazy part is, yeah, is he hires Pelicano. To spy on the producers of this fucking movie. Yeah. yeah. This is the movie that he does something majorly illegal for. Yeah. To like kind of get information on. And he ends it's up like spending. Pete Rose betting on it? his team. Yeah. He, what did he spend? <laughs> two and a half years in jail? He's, he's been out for a long time. He hasn't done anything since then. Right. right but I'm saying. Ticks he, me off. He actually went to fucking jail. Yeah. For, yeah. for like, like something like 20 months, I think. That blows my fucking brain out but like <laughs> he's so now but like here's the thing i w- uh, w- i should assume that he's been blackballed because no one's working with well, totally him. i mean you know not not to bring up a different thing but michael vick you know beat the shit and killed dogs true he was back in the nfl a year later yeah the yeah, nfl right. as, he, as an employer was able to say you did your time we're going to look past that i would think in hollywood production companies would be able to say Oh, you you know you did a little spying. Okay, no big deal. Yeah, never mind the pedophilia problem in Hollywood. But exactly. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Exactly. It's so listen, I'm, again, we can go down the hypocrisy bubble that is, that is out there, but you know it's it's bad. I guess I guess in my head, I'm just so my mind is so blown because you know what? I would go to jail for 20 months over Predator. Like I love <laughs> Predator so much. I love Predator so much that if I went to jail over like something like that, I would be like, 
When I got out, I would I would never drink for free. I would never pay for a drink again. Because people would say, what'd you do? I'm like, I went to jail right. over Predator. And you people mean like, like Gene Wilder in Stir Crazy. People would be like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> One of my notes in the, in when, we were, when I was watching this, I'm like, it, okay, he's actively making this movie this way, right? Like, he's purposely saying, like, screw it. We're just going to do this now. Like, that had to happen at some point. I, I would think so. Yeah. The first screen. So the screening. I mean, it was originally like an unapologetic hard R film. Bones breaking. Yeah. Teeth lots getting violence, knocked out. Lots of violence, lots of blood, blood, nudity, sex. sex. Yeah. There, yeah. So at least it had a focus, and that's what it was. And it was over two hours long. Right. First screening happens in Las Vegas in, in uh, 2001, early 2001. They're trying to make this for a summer 2001 film. Ain't it cool news? Harry Knowles, who was yeah. a big thing back then, he went to it. And even he said, this might be the worst movie I've ever seen. <laughs> right. Right? This, this may be the worst thing I've ever seen. So MGM gets a brand new uh, kind of head of marketing, and they decide we're going to do massive reshoots. Yeah. Right? Through the summer of 2001. Right. And we're going to try to release this like late summer. They they changed right. the entire get a ending. new new marketing strategy. Changed the ending. They Delay changed a, they changed a bunch of the rollerball scenes. The stuff I have here that was like the, some of the cuts were made because MGM thought the movie was too Asian. Quote unquote. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> I, I read that as well. This awesome. movie. Way to go, MGM. <laughs> this movie was not only too Asian, but the original score was by BT, uh, who scored the Fast and the Furious, uh, Monster, and Stealth, and they. Completely scrapped it because it was too Arabic. Yeah, <laughs> too yes, Arabic. I got that right. too. Yeah. So Rollerball yeah. <laughs> was deemed too Asian and too Arabic. Uh, they brought Eric Serra in to do the final score. Uh, he did uh, um, Golden Eye, uh, The Fifth Element. Uh, Yet and, it takes yeah. place in Kazakhstan. Well, yeah, and, exactly. And how completely short sighted is that? Because the biggest market is international. Yeah, and you're just completely yeah. just going to undercut that. Not, not yeah. just that, but let's talk about the elephant in the room, right? So the movie is deemed too Asian, right? The score is deemed too Arabic. This movie's set in Kazakhstan, and it essentially portrays the people as a bunch of fucking like what? Okay, the the people playing the, the, the people the, doing the people the game? like in the in the in the actual like in the country. Gotcha, gotcha. It's kind of like lower class. You know what I mean? Like, like blue collar guys. Like like blue collar. Yeah. Like they're you know what I mean? Like, they yeah. just they kind of throw yeah. that out there. Well, they say they work like like they. You're supposed to assume that they work in the mine. There's a mine, or something There's certainly like that. a mine. Yeah, yeah. Like, but they don't say it. But like that's the they idea. They don't say anything. In yeah, this movie. No, they no. don't tell you anything. Yeah, you I just see this... a bunch of people doing a bunch of shit, and, 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 and for like a bunch that, of reasons. Yeah, and that one guy <laughs> is like one of them. Like hey, he's from the country. I, I don't like, even understand. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. talking. Yeah, Oleg. I know what you mean. Oh, yeah, Oleg. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know one of the miners who who made it. Yeah, right? and all of his buddies show up to every match. And, well, skate. this is what happens yeah. when you shoot an R-rated movie <laughs> and then reshoot it as PG-13 and mash it all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing makes any sense. Now, I have a feeling, as I do on these episodes, where we might be landing at the end of this episode with our ratings. But I will say something about this movie, comparatively to some of the other movies we've done in trash uh, episodes, is I thought that this was an interesting exercise in watching a movie that had so many problems like uh, field as a, as a movie maker sure were you interested in watching this and kind of putting together like the huge gaps in story we'll get to one of the biggest things in substance and style in this thing right like seeing how not to do something no i mean that's definitely something that you can always take from a, a movie that's not so good i always say on the podcast you know it takes a village to make a great film it takes a village to make a bad film there's not one person you can point to right but there's a lot of things like you talk about all like the hands in the pot and all the different things they change all the stupid decisions that mgm makes but you know there's you never want to say like oh this movie's you, know, you never want to just like shut down a movie and be like oh this movie's terrible i hate this film i'm never gonna watch it but, yeah like, at least have a reason right but sometimes there's some movies where it's very clear that the people making it just don't care. No, nope. they're, they're they're cashing a paycheck. And at that point, it's like, why should I care? You know, like why should I really give you the benefit why of the should doubt? I care? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I got that. I had that feeling a lot with this film. Like it was just like, mm, like I have notes where I'm just yelling at the screen, like what is happening? Like yeah. you know, like just <sighs> yeah. Well, we're doing likes happens. and dislikes, right? We're, we're, yeah, let's okay. get yeah. We're, we're gonna getting... get into that right next. <laughs> so so we kind of talked about this very fractured production this thing was just you know it, it's it's hurt by that yeah right it's hurt by constant rewrites and eventually they determined that they can't get this thing out in summer of 2001 at all and then right. 9-11 happens so that probably fucked with everything as well it, there was nothing written about that but that's just i'm adding that yeah in. i yeah i don't know but when was the writer strike it's not this late right no it's no no really, okay yeah. all right okay because yeah. I, I never remember so you got to figure maybe movies had to kind of re, re, refigure around 9-11 and, and stuff like that so they finally decide we're going to put this out in 2002, 
but we're going to put it out in the fucking Hurt Locker in 2002, <laughs> in February, February oh, yeah. 8th. Movie's yeah. going to die. We're, nothing, right? I mean, okay, so we've talked about this before, Field. You worked for many years uh, in a theater. Yeah. Right? Yeah. February, January, that's where you go to kill a movie, right? That's where you, go, you don't know what to do with the film. Right. Yeah, you, just, you put it there. I mean, it went up against Collateral, though. So, I mean, so clearly they didn't know what to do with Collateral. Really? Yeah, I have it what down. Collateral was yeah. 04. No, nah, I got, I got uh, man. oh, wait a minute. No, no, I have Collateral. Really? I, that's what I got here. Okay. Maybe no, it's Collateral okay. Damage. Maybe oh, I wrote that down wrong. Hold on. Maybe I wrote that down wrong. Interesting. Okay. But, you know, I, yeah, it's generally, like, stuff in January it, like the new stuff, it's, it's collateral damage. It's collateral damage. There you go. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, weekend better. numbers. Okay. And but um, in, there. in January you will get like the movies that are bleeding in from the limited releases before for Oscar season. An Oscar rush, right? Yeah. But the new films in January are generally in February are generally like we don't really know if this movie's gonna do well, so we'll put it here. But I will say this: that there, some horror films do are now getting released in the winter because everyone's cold and they'll run out for the horror. Like Escape Room wasn't right. early. And now it's got a sequel, but that wasn't early January, February, I believe. I think it was one of the first films that year that it came out. So you you are starting to see some films that are strategically released because they think that they'll get a quick opening weekend and then take it out and then you'll see it on VOD, that kind of thing. But back in the day, yeah, it was where movies went to die. All right. All right, Master, let's do uh, the Rotten Tomatoes and then let's right. go into uh, into box office before right. we get to our likes and All right, dislikes. let's do that. All right, so Rotten Tomatoes. So the number for being certified fresh is 60%, and this wrote, uh, this came in at 3%. Wow, I was going to guess five. A whopping 3%. This has got to be the lowest we've done. I, I don't remember all well, the episodes. I know we had a very low one. We've done 10, and I know the there was one that was yeah. pretty low, but like yeah. three? Wow. Yeah. That Audience feels to me. score a little bit higher at 14%. Wow. wow. I, I got a question why it's at three. Who 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 liked it? Uh, one hundred seventeen <laughs> ratings for the uh, tomato meter. Tomato, tomatoes, tomato, rotten tomatoes, <laughs> and twenty five thousand for the audience. Filter. So you got to figure the numbers are going to rise with twenty five thousand. Yeah. A lot of drunk dudes. Yeah, a lot of a lot of drunk lot of early two thousand guys who just finished listening to like the latest like Deftones album. Yeah, you know. Oh like, yeah, love. Let's go fucking see Rollerball. <laughs> Well, I heard that you could almost see Rebecca Stamos's titties through a shadow. Kind of shady. It probably was like, what do you want to collateral damage or rollerball? Yeah. Oh, let's just go see Arnold. All yeah, right. let's just yeah. go see the fucking yeah. Arnold movie. Uh, did you say the budget yet? No, I did not. Seventy million for the budget. <sighs> Fuck my ass. That's crazy. So seventy million uh, opening weekend made nine. Where's it going? Pretty respectable <laughs> opening weekend. Uh, total box office eighteen point nine and worldwide twenty five point eight. They. Screeching. They didn't even care. I'm curious. Screeching halt there. I'm curious how much money was pumped in after, like, when they wanted to do the reshoots and all that stuff. Like, how much of that budget is that? You know, like, you know uh, what I mean? Yeah, because I guess I guess the ending was actually, like you said, was different. Uh, in the original ending, he was going to fly home and he owned Rollerball somehow. <laughs> oh, God. He yeah, owned, like, he owned the sport, like, somehow after he, Yeah, it's you know, like Willy Wonka in the truck with that. Yeah, thing. and he was, <laughs> was going to bring it to America and, and do it right. Uh, yeah. yeah, holy cow. All right. If you want to view so I, <laughs> I'll give you the weekend numbers. Um, that weekend, Rollerball came in at number three, nine million dollars. Shame just, on you, just ahead of Black Hawk Down Ooh. in its seventh week. I was gonna say, yeah. all right, uh, two other, two other uh, first week movies, uh, both came in ahead. Uh, Big Fat Liar at number two at 11.5. I saw that one. That's a kid's movie. I saw that once years ago. It's actually kind of funny. That's uh, like Paul Giamatti's in that. Freddie Mune. Yeah, he's good. in the middle. That's when that was big. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then number one was Collateral Damage at yes. 15 million. Arnold. I'm going to damage you collaterally. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Is that the one where his family gets killed or something? Yeah. And he goes to like the, the Brazil? Coll their collateral damage. Yeah. And he, starts, he starts basically going after terrorists. It's an after 9-11 movie. Kind okay. Of thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So for the year, I'm going to play a little game here. Uh, Rollerball came in at 110. Holy shit. I'm going to give you a couple other uh, titles. You tell me if that came in before or after. Oh, I like this. Above or below. 110 right. out of how many movies out of you mean? all okay. the movies that okay. year. Right. Rollerball came in 110. Okay. At 18.9 million. I'll, I'll defer to Field first. Ooh. All right. So I'm going to give you uh, Van Wilder. Oh, higher. Punch Drunk Love. I mean, like when I say higher, I mean closer to one. Right, yeah. lower. I go. I go with higher as well. Like okay. closer to one, as right. you said. All right. Um, eight legged freaks. Higher. So, wait, you said punch drunk love, right? And punch drunk love. Oh, punch drunk love. I'll say lower <laughs> because it was probably a very small release. Eight legged freaks. I'd say higher. I'll agree with that. Yeah. All right. 
You got two right. Van Wilder is just a bit higher. It's nowhere near number one. Van Wilder was 105. Wow. Uh, Punch Drunk Love uh, came in below Rollerball at 17.8. Not and surprising. Eight, Eight-Legged Freaks came in below that at 17. Wow. Yeah. Funny thing is, I saw Eight-Legged Freaks and Van Wilder in the theaters. <laughs> I <laughs> yeah. did not see Rollerball. <laughs> I'll give you the top 10 real quick. Uh, number 10, Chicago. Number 9, Ice Age. Eight, Men in Black 2. Seven, Austin Powers and Goldmember. Number six, Signs. Number five, My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Mm. Number four, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Number three, Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. <laughs> uh, seem to have talked about that quite a bit tonight. Uh, number two, Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. And number one, 2002, Spider-Man. My Big Fat Greek Wedding was... Huge, yeah, huge. Movie. That was it, a like big it was, movie. yeah, it was like biz every Saturday night. Like it was out forever, and every Saturday night it sold out. At wow. the, and, I, and this is when I worked at the Showcase Orange, which is not now the UI building uh, in Orange, but it was like, and it was in a six hundred seat theater, and it sold out every Saturday. Night. I remember when that came out. I never saw it. Was it wasn't interested in it, but I think at the time, maybe right after Blair Witch, it was one of the yeah. biggest independent films yeah. ever. Because it was made for nothing. Who, huge. who the fuck knew who Nia Vardalos was? Yeah. yeah. You know? And, and uh, oh, wasn't there a sequel a few years ago? Yeah, that yeah just, there was. I watched yeah. it. It's, yeah. right. it's just kind of like they rehash jokes and right. stuff. Like she uh, she did another one with Tony Collette, Connie, and Carla, which is actually pretty good. Okay. Where they, they have to go hide on the run because they witness a murder and they go hide as drag queens. And uh, I think it's in Miami. I'm not sure. But like, or maybe it was in California. But like, so they're women, but they're pretending they're men who are in drag. So oh, okay. It's actually pretty funny. All right. So let's get to our likes and dislikes, okay? We'll do a couple rounds of each. All right. Uh, I know couple, the likes. Or a couple rounds. I can do a couple rounds. A couple rounds. All right. Uh, I'll start. I'll, I'll go with my like first on this thing. When I say like, it's a broad like. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. John McTiernan obviously knows how to film action, okay? He's made Predator. He's made Die Hard. I don't think that the roller, the two big rollerball scenes we get are anything special, but they're handled well. And I do kind of like the, you know the pageantry and the costume design of the rollerball world. You know what I mean? The motorcycles, you know, the different masks that some of these people are wearing. Um, I thought that was well done. Yeah. Um, the rollerball matches themselves. It's very slick. Where as opposed to a lot of like sports movies or action films are cut crazily. You can't tell what's happening. I could actually tell it was happening. So I'll give him credit on that, that obviously after making all these great action movies, he still can handle that. Unfortunately, if his whole idea was to make this movie more about rollerball, there's a it's devoid of rollerball. <laughs> there's a big scene in the beginning and then there's a scene at the end. And there's about 55 fucking minutes in between that. There's a lot of exposition on how to play the game of rollerball. Oh, they have that little d- demonstration. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, the ball shoots out. Yeah. The, the bike, the bike's got to fucking. Have to go, you have to go through the mouse. Yeah, you had yeah, to go up and around. The bike, the bike has to do three fucking laps. Yeah. Why couldn't it just be like roller derby, like the original? <laughs> yeah, I think maybe they thought this might catch on in real life. Yeah, yeah, I don't right. know. yeah. Um, Manster, what do, what do you get for a like? Uh, well, you really took my uh, stylized rollerball thing. Um, I'm going to say I've said it already. I liked a couple of the songs in the movie. There you go. That's okay. mine. Yeah. I'm taking that too. All right. <laughs> right, oh, so, so, back, so the new metal fans here have identified themselves. Well, no, okay. because you, like you said, you listened yeah. to that music. Back I listened in the day. to yeah. it back then. I yeah. put on my my headphones sure. and run. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's my like. I don't have likes. So okay, that's it. <laughs> all, right. all right. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna try to be. No, right. I'm gonna don't. try my hardest. To, this movie's tough. Yeah. This movie's tough. There's, I'm, what, I'm, what's there's nothing to like. What in this I like movie. about Pine of Comics as a show, <laughs> besides it being our show, and I have to say I like it, is. That like there's no hard stance. Like I, I'm not saying to everybody we need three likes and three. No, we just we end whatever, when we end. Whatever it takes. We end when we end. If you what, what did we have for likes in Jaws 3D? We had we got more out, but it was harder. <laughs> uh, I think Leah Thompson was a like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I. You know what? I'm gonna go. Let's go to dislikes. <laughs> no, no, no. I got more likes. Do you have more Why? likes? Why? Yeah, yeah. Why? All, All right. right. <laughs> I'll, I'll okay. I'll give it this. But I'll give this as a like, right. and it's a minor like. I like LL Cool J. He's yeah. good, yeah. LL Cool J is a good screen presence. And when your main screen screen presence is so fucking devoid, <laughs> he shines a little bit more. He shines. Right? Yeah. Like you actually, like me personally, when he gets, there's a scene in the movie where he gets hurt and you think he's going to die. I was actually, and he does eventually die. Oh, LL? Yeah. He does eventually die. But before he dies, you're worried that he get he gets hurt and he's going to die. Yeah. I was actually glad he didn't die. 
when he does die in the movie, I was like, oh, fuck, they killed it all right. off. Yeah, right. Like, why didn't we kill Chris Why Klein is there off? still, like, 45 minutes left? Exactly. So, <laughs> so I could dig far enough to say LL. Oh, and if I'm going to give one more, Rebecca Romaine in a black wig, I got no problem with <laughs> Yeah, that. that's good stuff. Even as deformed as she was. Yes, yeah, she is so horribly <laughs> deformed. Hold on, then before you do your like, I'll give you one like. It, made, right. it made me watch the original. Okay, go ahead. Uh, there right. you go. No, that's, that's fair. A good one. That's fair. All right, uh, my like, and now, actually, the more I think about it, I think this should be a dislike, but here it is. There are no swinging monkeys in trees. There's no 3D <laughs> sharks, and there's no Ninja Turtles. Okay, there, all right. Oh, you all do right. hate those Ninja Turtles. <laughs> he really does. He really does. All right, let's start with us, uh, since he had nothing for likes, oh, no. really. Yeah. Let's start with Field with Dislikes. Chris Klein. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not a fan. Just... No, yeah, he's a black not, hole of a personality. Not, not, not a fan. Like I, there's like mom. There, I have my notes. Like there's, so there's one moment, and this might be that's not, probably not Chris Klein's fault. But do you remember when he leaves? He gets caught up in the political rally, and he's like, he they, it, they firebomb it, his car, right? And no, I actually don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got to get back to the plane. Right, yes. and so he gets on the plane, and he's got this five o'clock shadow, like, <laughs> yes. and it's like, first of all, uh, it looks like it's penciled on, and second of all, it's like shaved, right? Like in, it, in, in shape. Yeah, it was shaped. It's it, like, w- but w- that's another question: Was that due to fucking reshoots? I and have no idea. Someone should have caught it, yeah. but I absolutely yeah. picked that out as well. He's he's totally clean shaven like, in the in the nightclub scene. Then Photoshop, clean man. shaven when when they fire yeah. on his car. He gets to the plane and he looks like fucking a lumberjack. It's like <laughs> no. <laughs> and there's and there's another moment at the end of the movie where he gets his eye basically scarred and he's got his eye closed. And then the last shot of the movie, she's like, oh, "I'm gonna hopefully take you to bed after this," and he's fine. Yeah, his yep. eye is. It's I like know. what's happening? Like, th- so I know that's not really just Chris Klein. It's more of the continuity. But I'm gonna lump them together. I was not a fan of either. Okay. All right, if I have to go with a dislike... Uh, you have to go? If you have like to go. No, 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 not forced, not forced. I'm trying to pick something that's not Chris Klein, because that's, that's easy. Because that's all over. That's easily one of the first things. Um, I just think that the whole story is so fucking shoddy. Like, it, it just... This whole story is shot. Well, what's the plot? Tell me the plot. That's of the what I'm movie. saying. Yeah. So that's exactly what I'm trying to. Yeah, I'm trying to verbalize. Is, the plot of the movie is Alexi wants to keep people playing. That's it. I said it earlier. Is they realize that that rollerball is becoming entirely too brutal, and that it's all ratings based. Which it's a TV well, thing. Why didn't you realize the ratings were important? He's trying to sell it to the American market and to the other markets. That's his. That's why he's got those people there. Right. 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 He's got all of his all, all the other investors that are trying to get it over to America. Right. And he realizes this, and he realizes that he just needs to get home. That's it. That's the whole fucking yeah. movie. That's yeah. the entirety of the movie. Um, but if okay, so besides that, I'll give this one other one out. That story that's more continuity wise. And I remembered this from my first viewing eighteen, nineteen years ago. The 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 fucking night vision scene. Oh, oh you yeah. just took mine. No, okay, right, then right. then take over. Then All just right. take over. <laughs> All right, so they're like leaving. They're trying to escape, right? And then so they're all of a sudden driving wherever the hell they're driving. I don't know, across the desert. I'm not sure where. The Kazakhstan desert. Yeah, right. uh, obviously. And it's nighttime, <laughs> and uh, it's green screen. It's it's green filter. Like yeah. it's night vision. It's night filter. Vision. It's night vision. All right, so you're following them, and they're they're riding on a motorcycle. So you have like. But you gotta, it's not like a night vision filter through goggles or that's anything you gotta, like that. You got to put that out there right. for the people that haven't seen right. this. There's no, no point is of view. wearing yeah. right. UV or, or, or right. those type of... It's just this was filmed that way. There is zero point well, of view of night vision. It's just it's in just green tinted. It's not how tinted. we decided to shoot. Yeah. No. It's, it's because the original shot was too dark. Yep. And they said, well, let's just tint it green and it'll make sense. They had to reshoot the entire thing. Yeah. They reshot yeah. it and it pushed it back six months just to do that scene. Yep. I, I remember seeing this the first time. And when I finished this movie going, why the fuck was that in green screen? Like, is that a thing we're doing now? Like, yeah. I'm, I was kind of wondering, am I going to start seeing this in other movies? Right. Nope. Rollerball, well, it is it. That's well, it. You see it in Zero Dark Thirty, but like, that's well, the meant characters to, Yeah, no, I know. It. You're supposed to. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. No character is wearing a fucking night vision no. goggle in this. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Uh, you're absolutely the right. The whole scene is filmed in night vision. Yeah. Yeah. So fucking, like, not it only It just goes bad, to show the, the editing and the re edits and the reshoots just didn't work. L Cool J. Yeah. Uh, L Cool J, I think, like, later that year. Was on Conan O'Brien. He said the movie's not good. And he said this movie sucks. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I have <laughs> yeah. to promote it and I'm going to, but this is not a good movie. He's got a scene where he's like, just be cool, man. Smile, smile. And then like five minutes later, like, we're out of here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And his delivery, his lines are so dead and flat. Yeah. Everybody's is. Yeah. It's like, you know, the yeah. dialogue is so poorly written that nobody can get behind it. There's no emotion to anything. Right. 
It's just all flat. It's just words being spoken. Yeah. Yeah. And, and speaking, because we're talking about story, but like the whole plot point of that, you know, that blood cells, like they act like it's a shock. It's not a shock. No. Right. You know I mean? This isn't 1975. Well, again, and if you're saying this is in the future of that time. Yeah. Blood, blood sold in 1988. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Sold. Yeah. yeah. yeah it, it, it's blood not like... You're, tra- you're talking about wrestling. I mean, you're, you're, you know, when they purposely cut themselves and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. People love that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I got, I'll get another scene. Yeah, give us another one. The At the very end of the movie, when, when he's going around and, and the sports announcer is like, oh my God, he's going <laughs> to do it. And he flies through and he crashes through the window. The whole editing of that scene, yeah. like... You see, you see his feet coming through. You yeah. see the window crash. You see the the rollerball just going off into the distance. Mm. And then there's a cut scene, right? And then it goes to uh, somebody fumbling for a gun. And then he, <laughs> then he, then he whips the ball at him. He doesn't even have the ball. The ball is like across the oh, room. He throws somewhere. a stool, right? He throws that stool or something. Well, no, he yeah. actually picks up the ball and whips right, the ball right, at somebody. Right, but right. the ball is not there anymore. Uh, and then every scene is jerky and cut. Like, we're not going to actually film any action. Yeah. We're just going to film the reaction to what you didn't see. It's stupid. Yeah. Uh, it was so horrible. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but also, like, it, the other thing, too. Um, so in the original, when they, at the end of the movie, because they always chant Jonathan. So they, John yeah, John not John John yeah, not John. At the end of the movie, it's a big thing in the James Conn film because, you know, he's bigger than the game. Like, they didn't want him to become bigger than the game. That was the whole thing of the movie. And, the, yeah. and then, so at the end, when he, and they cut to the freeze frame. That's the whole point of that movie. In this movie, it's just completely nothing. Yeah. You well, know no, I mean? it's like, I'm going to fuck you now. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, deformed Rebecca Ray Mo- Romain Stamos, great. Yeah. You know? Uh, like, hop on this hay truck. Why is this hay truck downtown? Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, that was that was the workers. Because <laughs> like, he's like the hero of the workers now. <laughs> yeah. All right, Field yeah. uh, Give me another dislike. <laughs> uh, I think I mentioned it before, the luge race. So the guy nearly kills him. You yeah. almost got me killed. So your response to that is to murder him? Yeah. It's just, uh, <laughs> yeah. And then LL Cool J showing up with his car out of nowhere. Like, where where did he come from? Yeah, yeah. And how does he know who that is on the ground? I mean, it's just fucking guys going <laughs> sixty miles an hour. You I can't feel, tell. I feel like there was probably a whole backstory that was filmed or in the script about how they knew each other and how at some point earlier LL Cool J had said to him, "Look, I'm I'm going to do this thing out in Kazakhstan. You should come with me." No, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for my shot here. And instead, we meet them like in media res, where it's like like we're supposed to know all this yeah. Yeah. from a couple lines of dialogue. Now we're all smart enough to gather that, but it would have been much more helpful if you kind of knew. Did yep. so. The, speaking of plot point stuff, so remember when they were like, "Okay, we're gonna hide you out of here." Uh, they were gonna go, and that's the whole thing where L gets shot. Uh, yep. His character gets, sh- but like before that, um, Aurora and the other guy, the worker that that um, old egg, I think. Yeah, oh, like, yeah, helps them, right. And he helps him get up. And yeah. then, he, so he comes back after that whole thing. He says, you're going to play for me so for, for the last match. And they're saying that L's character is sick. And the guy, Oleg, that helped him says, Danny's not sick, is he? It's like, you helped him escape. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you? Well, uh, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. It, it's it's impossible to understand what's going on or, or yeah. why. Yeah. yeah. You just lose focus and you just don't care at yeah. the end. You're just like, I don't care. <laughs> All right. Let's rate this thing. I think it's fair. And it's only 90 minutes long, but it doesn't feel like it, it feels like it goes on forever. Hold on before you read yeah. it. Oh, yeah. This, okay. So the scene when they were chasing them with the um, night vision. Yeah. Did you hear the boing sound? Yeah. Boing. Yes. Yeah. And it happened like two or three times. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, like, what the? I, I'm like, is that legit? What is? <laughs> I, uh, you know what? I mean, I, it was literally. Boing, boing, boing. <laughs> I didn't write that in my notes, and I watched this two weeks ago because we were going to do it earlier, and we didn't. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> The, the whole fucking thing. This this thing. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to mention it oh, too. I had this, I rewound the movie because I was like, I, that's not that was. You that in your, my you house. Your kid was playing with. Like, I was like, that can't one be of those right. Old door springs. My yeah. kid have a mouse twanger thing. What's going <laughs> that on? That can't be right. <laughs> I think this is an, an inevitable conclusion, but let's get to it anyway. Let's start with field. Field trash, tolerable, or treasure. Well, this is this has been my note. This is, I'm going to read this verbatim. This is a movie, when you watch it in the theaters and the credits roll, you are so angry that you bolt up from your seat to leave the theater as fast as possible. This is trash. This is not good. Don't watch this film. <clears throat> watch the original. Watch the James Conn version. That is much, 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 much better. And it's a better yep. film. Yep. Manster, you agree? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And I'll echo Roger Ebert. Uh, an incoherent mess, a jumble of footage in search of a plot, meaning, and sense. 
it didn't succeed in any of in any of their thought processes, right? So we're gonna make this this really like exciting sports entertainment movie. It's not. You know, we're gonna get rid of the social commentary. Okay, you did that, but by doing that, you took out any semblance of plot really. Um, you've got the fucking the most wooden ass leading man of all time. Go, oh. Like a third, fourth, fifth choice because they offered Nick Cage the thing. Nick he Cage, said no. Keanu yeah. Reeves, yeah. no. Uh, Chris Klein, you gotta be like you've got to literally be going like you're they, scraping the bottom. It, that, this was filmed in 2000. Well, it's right after American they, Pie. They yeah. essentially just yeah. went this Ameri- This kid is the most athletic of these three kids or four kids. His stars on the rise. Yeah, his stars on the rise. They would have been better off with Sean fucking William Scott. You know, Stifler. They probably yeah, didn't Stifler. think of him that way because he was such a douchebag in that movie that maybe he had that stigma. You know, he, this guy can't be our hero. So they go with, you know, with Chris Klein. It's clear it, yeah. why Chris Klein never had another leading role after this. This is a movie that his agent's like, you do this film. And because it gets you the other films. Like, it's almost <laughs> like he listened to his agent here. Right. Like, it's like, because if he read the script, I mean, I hope that he understands you know, script writing and stuff like that. That he would have seen, like, this is not good. I should not do this. Yeah. Or worst case scenario, if you read the original script, which was better, maybe yeah. signed for it, yeah, and then and it's stuck screwed. in the middle of this yeah. fucking nightmare. Doesn't mm. excuse what's going on on yeah. screen though with him, because and, and also you've seen him in other movies after this. Election is almost his perfect role too, because it's like that perfect dim-witted, pretty yeah. boy look in, in in Election. But like after that, he's not in anything that's strong. He's strong in at all, and I don't no. know if it's because he just doesn't care or what. He can't get to that point. Maybe he saved that rollerball money. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious what he did in the flash. Again, I, I'm still amazed that McTiernan <laughs> went to yeah. jail over this movie. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going for the hat trick on this episode. <laughs> this is trash. <laughs> Triple trash. You know, I, I thought, you know, before we watching it, I thought that maybe, hey, maybe I was wrong about this movie. Maybe we'll see something different. This was the definition of a trash movie. This, this yeah. is on HBO Max right now. If you want to check it out, I recommend you don't. Yeah. yeah I, recommend I recommend you, you listen don't. to us Just talk stay about away. it. This is not... Sometimes, you know, if you listen to podcasts, you know, you listen to Forgotten Cinema or Pine and Comics, you might hear us talk about a movie and go, man, they didn't like that, and I love that movie. And that's your right, and that's your uh, your opinion, I'm telling you right it's now. Just wrong. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> you're not going to go and watch Rollerball 2002 and go. Those guys were fucking wrong. Yeah. No fucking way. It's, nope. Yeah. I challenge to find the three yeah, percent of critics you. or the nice or whatever it was the the, the the critics that liked this thing. I challenge to find any audience members that liked this thing. If you listen to this and you interact with us on social media and you liked it, please comment on this episode. Hmm. Uh, Manster, tell everyone where they can find Pine of Comics. Oh my god. Pine of Comics dot com. Uh, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. Any of those little things that you tuck in your phone. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and Facebook and Twitter. It's at Pino Comics. And Instagram, it's at point underscore O underscore comics. Field, thank you so much for being on this episode. Thanks for having me. These uh, TTTs have been fun doing with you. Yep. Uh, where can everybody find you and all of your wares? <laughs> well, I'm on Forgotten Cinema. That's on that's uh, on ForgottenCinemaPod.com, but also ForgottenEntertainment.com, uh, part of the Forgotten Entertainment family, obviously, with on the QT that you guys do. Uh Yet another DC animated podcast. I'm also part of the yet another MCU podcast, which we did our Infinity Saga run, which is now ended. Uh, but you can find me there with Pat Whalen. We went through all the movies and kind of had some. We had some fun. We liked it. Good episodes. I enjoyed. Yeah, those. yeah. So I mean, they'll always I, be there. I, exactly. I I learned a lot on those episodes because I don't know comics. So Pat was always like informing me about stuff, which was cool. Because I was like, you know, and then some stuff I'm just like, really, what? That your, your reactions were quite good. I'm a comic guy. Lloyd's a comic guy. I know more about Marvel than, than Lloyd does, and sometimes like you know. He, he would say something about a character, and you're like, "There's, there's really a character named this," and, yeah. and it was funny to man hear that. Thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, giant size. My man thing, thing with yeah. man thing, and then like Alpha Flight when he started telling me it was oh, the Canadian yeah. Avengers. I'm like, really? I got the yeah. omnibus. I got all the issues. <laughs> <laughs> I just was just like, all right, well, whatever. But I mean, I get it. It's it's, but it's but something like that is cool because I want to learn something right. on the podcast as well. So, but yeah, you can find me there, and you can also I have a personal website, MichaelDField.com, where I don't know a bunch of stuff that I do, short films, writing, all that fun stuff. Check it all out, Lloyd. What do Check we say? It out. See ya. <laughs> it's over, Johnny. It's over! Nothing is over! Nothing! You just don't turn it off!